from the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Grace and peace be with you all. Good evening and welcome to this service of hope and healing. I am Pastor Stephen Zeller here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cole Camp, Missouri, and I'm honored that you would make some space during this busy week to join me for this time of remembering and prayer. This is meant to be a time to pause and acknowledge the pain and grief, the, the fear and uncertainty that we are carrying. It feels like so often we are told not to worry so much about things because you know, God is with us. And, and apparently that is supposed to mean that things are just going to be okay. But it seems as though we forget that all throughout the Bible, there are all kinds of stories of people crying out to God. There are all kinds of people expressing their lament. There are people asking where God is or why do God does not seem to be present. Do you ever feel like that? It's probably safe to say that after the past few years that we've had, we all feel that way. Which makes it all the more important for us to acknowledge these feelings. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and make a pretty general assumption. So many of the things that weigh us down are caused by fear. Fear of sickness and the unknown. Fear of change. Fear of different people and ways that are different than us. Fear of a diagnosis or fear of living alone. Fear of the future and, and what is to come for each of us individually and for all of us collectively. Fear of things that hide inside of us and tell us that we are not good enough. We may not always call it that, but deep down in so many of the things that trouble us and weigh heavy on us is fear. It's a natural part of who we are, which is why another thing that we hear so often in the Bible is God telling us, do not fear. This evening we're going to do a few things. We're going to hear some words of God from the Bible. We're going to offer our own prayers for many of the things that trouble us or things that bring us fear. We're going to light candles as signs of God's presence, as signs of God's light that shines in the darkness, as signs of God's hope and peace. And we're going to join together in song. But for now, as we begin... Let us pray. O God of our salvation, you speak through angels and prophets, telling us, be strong, do not fear, for I will come and save you. Open our eyes, unstop our ears, that we may sing for joy at the coming of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, 
Let us now hear some readings from Scripture. We begin from Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, another part of this birth story. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to d dismiss her quietly. But just as when he re had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from his sins." All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and they named him Jesus. And finally, from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. 
Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people who I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Time and time again, the message from God is the same. Do not fear. Which is easy to say, but not as easy to hear. I don't have a solution or an answer for living without this fear, but what I think can help us is to name it. It's to bring it out into the open. Acknowledge it and, and pretend that it's not and not pretend that it's not there. Offer it up to God in prayer so that God can carry it with you. So this evening, as we've done in years past, I want to offer petitions and prayers as we light candles on the Advent wreath. This is meant to help us do what the season of Advent is meant to mean. Growing in hope and light in the midst of the world that needs just that. Signs that our Savior has come and that He will come again. And so as I light each candle, I invite your prayers for each petition. And so the first candle that we light is to remember those persons whom we have loved and lost through death. We pause to remember their name, their voice, their face, the memory that binds them to us in this season. We hold them before God, giving thanks for their life in ours. We also remember all who have died due to the ever-present pandemic, all who have perished in recent tornadoes and storms, and all the forgotten or overshadowed tragedies. Let us pray. Lord, together, today we remember our loved ones and all who have died. Even though we'd prefer to have those loved ones still with us, we know that they are free and at home with you. We ask that you fill us with motivation and energy in the days ahead when we feel like giving up or living in fear of life without them. Take our sad and aching hearts and comfort us. Amen. The second candle we light is to redeem the pain of loss. The loss of relationships or the distance between loved ones living or serving far away. The loss of jobs or status. The loss of health in ourselves or in our family members and friends. The loss of joy, laughter, and peace in our lives from the stresses that surround us. The loss of normalcy in our lives and in the world. Or any type of losses that, can, that cause emptiness within our beings. As we gather up our pain, we offer it to you, O God, 
asking that into our open hands you will place the gift of peace. Let us pray. God of mystery, we come before you in need of peace, ever keenly aware of your promises of guidance and protection. We want to place our trust in you, but our hearts grow fearful and anxious. We forget so easily that you will be with us in all that we experience. Teach us to be patient with the transformation of our lives and to be open to the changes which we are now going through. Amen. The third candle we light is to redeem the pain of brokenness. The brokenness that fills our lives and fills this world. We think of those who deal with physical and mental illness, cancer, depression, thoughts of suicide. We seek light for the false expe expectations that we carry, for the challenges of addiction, for the burden of financial concerns. We beg you, O oh God, for healing of victims of violence, for those carrying PTSD, those going through divorce. We lament broken relationships. We lament the division in our community and nation, the distrust of one another, racism and injustice. We grieve the broken dreams that we have set aside. We call out to you when we ourselves are the ones who are carrying the weight of brokenness with no signs of hope. Let us pray. God of our depths, we cry out to you for your healing presence. We remember that your Son, Jesus Christ, was the great physician who healed the sick and made the broken whole. Touch our wounds, relieve our hurts, and restore us to wholeness of life. Amen. The fourth candle, we light to illuminate our fears. Fear of what surrounds us, fear of the unknown, fear of other human beings, fear of what is to come. The fear that drives us to act in certain ways, the fear that stops us in our tracks, and even our fear of God. Let us pray. O God who surrounds us, you tell us again and again not to fear. Yet we walk through this life grabbing on to what makes us afraid instead of reaching out for you. Clear our paths. Banish the darkness. Calm our fears. Point us in the direction of your light and your hope and walk with us always. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The fifth candle in this wreath, what we call the Christ candle, 
is traditionally lit starting on Christmas Eve, signaling the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ. And while we know that our Savior has already come into this world once, we're going to leave this Christ candle unlit this evening as a sign of our hope, the promise of hope for the day when Christ will come again to make all things right. So now I would like to invite us into a time of our own reflection and prayer. If you have your own candle or candles in front of you and have not yet lit them, I'd invite you to do so during this time. But you're also welcome to simply rest, be still, and reflect on the music and the growing light from the candles here as you offer to God the burdens that you carry the weight of grief and the fears that fill you. And may you in this time be a witness to the healing love of God. And now together, let us pray the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you once again for joining me this evening. 
I pray that this time has been meaningful for you and that these remaining days before Christmas are filled with hope and peace. And so as we go on our ways, we embrace and claim the darkness that is present both in this world and in our lives. As people who are familiar with the darkness, we also know that together we will be illumined by the growing light of the Christ child, both this Advent and this Christmas season. And so now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.